All right, in this week's Coach's Corner segment, we have a special guest today, Coach Vico Conla from the baseball team. Coach, glad to have you. Glad to be here. Thank you guys for having me on. So I guess just first of all, tell us a little bit um, about your your background, how how you got to Coker and, and kind of the basis of what you've done here so far. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Um, at the time, the assistant coach here was from Miami as well. So he did a lot of recruiting in the South Florida area. And um, he saw me at a showcase event. Um, I'm not going to lie, I was undersized. You know what I mean? Um, smaller kid with a chip on my shoulder, had something to prove. And not too many schools in Florida were on me. You know, so a, a couple schools up here in the Carolinas um, were on me. I made a couple visits and I fell in love with the school. I fell in love with the coach. And um, made one of the biggest decisions of my life was to come up here in the middle of nowhere of Hartsville, South Carolina, you know, <laughs> yeah. Miami city boy. And, um, I loved it, you know, and, uh, Coker gave me a chance to earn my degree, but also continue to, to play the game that I love and, um, graduated from here, got my, uh, undergraduate, my master's, um, coached a little bit of high school ball, um, went back down to Florida, coached a little high school ball down there. And then, um, came back up to the Carolinas, coached at Newberry for four or five years, and then made a decision to come here and be the head ball coach here. You know what I mean? And it sounds kind of cheesy because it is a little bit, but ever since graduating from this place, it's, this is my dream job to come back and be here. You know, and um, I'm excited to be here. We got a good group, and I'm excited to see what we got for the rest of the season. Yeah, that's that the, the, the story and the progression from from – not only being here but also having success here as as a player with the teams that you had and and then moving from that into the coaching realm and, and getting to coach your alma mater I, i'm sure that has to be special so um how do you with your love for coker how do you work to instill that love um into your players like you have yeah absolutely it's, i mean it's an everyday grind it's an everyday battle you know what I mean? And and it's it's understanding the culture and the history of this place and, and what makes Coker what it is, you know, and especially the baseball program here. Because you got to think about it. There was one coach that started this program and was here for 30 years. You know what I yeah. mean? And he, he, he coached a, a lot of great players. There's a lot of baseball support and alumni here. And, and it was hard. You know what I mean? He, he, he was hard on us. You know, he pushed mm -hmm. us, but, but he was using the game of baseball you know, as a tool to teach us what life's about, you know, and that and that that's my biggest thing. You know, all these kids want to get drafted. They want to play professional baseball. Right. I mean, that, that's their goal, you know, but the odds aren't in their favor to do that. You know, so my goal is to make sure they're ready for life when they leave this place, you know, and, and, and that they understand that they got to wake up and, and chew the nail every day and get after it and just attack the day and win the day. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So I, I guess from uh, looking at last season and then moving into this season um, 19 wins on the season last year and then already 16 this year so how have you used your philosophy and stuff to, to start that turnaround from where you got here yeah it was, i mean we came in and, and, and the biggest thing me and my staff had to do last year was change the culture of this place mm -hmm. you know that the we had too many guys that that baseball wasn't a priority or, or didn't really understand what college baseball was about you know mm -hmm. and we brought in a different style of philosophy and, and gameplay. And, and so me and my assistants as well last year, and obviously every year, I mean, it's all about recruiting. You know what I mean? So we had to bring in the type of kids that fit what we do. So last year we brought in about 29, 30 players um, wow. that mixed way. And, and that was the biggest thing this fall was to make sure that the guys returning from last year mixed with the guys that came in this year. Cause it was basically two new teams. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That had to come together with one goal and one same mindset. And, and early in the fall, we went through our bumps and, and bruises. You know what I mean? But that's the thing with, with the culture that we preach here is that, man, you got 50 guys that are going through it just with you. You know what I mean? And you, mm -hmm. you got those brothers to rely on. When things get tough, when you're homesick, you know you got four or five guys that, that, that are going through the same thing you are. You know, So you can always relate with someone. We're big with team culture, team chemistry, and guys loving for each other. And, and wanting to fight for each other. Yeah. So I I, I asked the the same question to um, Coach Michael Lamberti from from men's basketball. Uh, I know that that taking over a a program as as a new head coach can be daunting, especially when you inherit so many players. Like like you said, you know you have to 
implement a new system. You, ha- I mean, these are these are kids that that are. I mean, you can get them to buy into what you're doing, but you know that's not what they were brought in for. They were brought in with a different coach and a different philosophy and things like that. So, what are some things that that you can do as a as a head coach and also like maybe some activities or or wh- whatever it may be to to kind of try and get them to to buy into that philosophy. That's one thing about this group is that we came into a special group that bought in right away. You know what I mean? There was there wasn't any fight back. You know and and. Yeah, the, there were a couple of kids, but they weeded themselves out and ended up quitting. You know what I mean? But, but but as a group, my staff and I were blessed to have a good group that 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 were all in. You know, we, we have a group that wanted to be coached. They wanted to be pushed hard. You know, I mean, they wanted to be challenged. They wanted to be held to high standards and expectations. You know, so for for us as coaches coming in, we were kind of blessed. You know, and 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 we had a good group. But they just needed a. A guy to push them, a, a, a leader and 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 three leaders as coaches to, to come in and push them and hold them to high standards and expectations. Absolutely, and obviously going back to the um, topic of some of the freshmen and everything like that, at, with uh, what's called some of the class coming in. Obviously, Blackwell being one of the main focuses and everything like that has been arguably one of the good arms coming out of the bullpen for you guys and for the entire staff. What has it been like, kind of just getting? both of Blackwell as well as, again, this whole rotation of freshman class that's just come in and just revitalized almost like a new energy in a sense. Absolutely. That's a great question. And and, and, and that's one thing is that our program, we're kind of based off the high school kid. You know what I mean? We, we like to get those four-year kids in here. We like to develop them for four years. And, yeah, we have a couple of junior transfers mixed in there, of course. Every team's going to have that. But, but – we like to play freshmen. You know what I mean? The, 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 the only way to learn is through experience. You know what I mean? And, and, and too many programs get these young kids in here and they, they just kind of rot on the bench for a couple for a couple of years and not developing it better. You know, and in order, and what we believe in, what we do here, in order to get better, you got to play. You got to play. You know what I mean? You got to play the game. You got to go through experiences. You got to learn through the game. But yeah, Blackwell has been good for us. You know, I mean, he goes in there, fills it up, and competes. You know, does he have the best stuff in the world? No. You know what I mean? But in his head, he does. And that's one of the biggest things as a pitcher is that you got to have that mindset that you're better than whoever's in that box and you're going to step in and you're going to compete with them. And the thing is, is with a lot of these freshmen as well as the pitching rotation, it's something that you rarely see from a lot of uh, pitchers and everything like that. It's one of those things, whether the score is, you know, we're up by 20 or it's a one run game coming into the top of the night, then we need to hold everybody. And we bring somebody in to hold that lead and everything like that, or to hold it to one yeah. one run. And it's like like one of those things where they come in with the same confidence and the, the same mindset. So I would assume from a coach's aspect and everything like that, with them having that mindset of coming in and just being ready and good to go is almost, uh, almost a breath of fresh air to see and everything like that. Because it's like, here comes a guy who's going to, who has the mindset of, I'm ready, I'm good to go, no matter what the situation is, and I'm going to treat it as if it's a tie game heading into the top of the ninth. Yeah, no, absolutely. But all that, I mean, you guys see that those three or four hours every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but but it starts with the preparation, you know what I mean? And I'm blessed to have one of the best pitching coaches in the country, and Kyle Gallman, that, that he puts in the work with him. You know what I mean? He, he practices game reps, uh, just, just – everything in order to put them in a mindset that that when we practice it's like a game you know what i mean so, so when they get in the game they can just trust the work they put in so that's where i think that confidence comes from is that 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 they practice with that confidence they, they practice pressure hard situation where coaches on them coaches on top of them you know and, and and again we have a good group that doesn't fight back they want it they, they want to be pushed hard they can handle being pushed hard they can handle being coached hard and that's one thing that I'm lucky to say that that we have a good group. Yeah. So, sorry. I, I mean, I play lacrosse, and I'm out there on the practice field, and then I look over. You guys are long gone, and your pitching coach go out there with uh, all the pitchers on the mound. They're just going to work. I mean, we'll be out. We'll be done with practice. They'll still be out there. So it's really cool to see like your co- the coaching group you have really does care about the players. And me as a player myself, it really. I mean, you guys buy in, makes us play better. What a play. <laughs> At higher level. No, I appreciate that. And, yeah, I mean, and again, I, I have two, two of the hardest working assistants. You know what I mean? 
People want to give me the credit because I'm the head guy, man. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, without those two, we we wouldn't be where we're at right now. Absolutely. And obviously, for preparation and everything like that, it comes down to um, playing in the sack and everything like that. And sometimes some of the easiest or one of the best preparations you can have is a tough non-conference schedule. And for you guys, I mean, you get that with obviously facing the number five team in the nation in UNC Pembroke facing the number two team in the nation in uh, North Greenville coming up up and obviously beating a team who was in the Elite Eight in Belmont Abbey last year as well as Mount Olive. What is it like, you know, going up against those teams and then obviously we'll talk about the results in the end, yeah. end but like what is it like going up against a pretty solid non-conference schedule? Me personally, I love it. And 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 our guys embrace the challenge. You know what I mean? And and we set goals and and, and to attain the, those goals, we got to go through good teams. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the past three or four years, it's gone through North Greenville, you know, and, and we got to go. We're going to go over there. We're going to go play them, you know, and, and it, it's good for them to, to be in these environments and, and, and play these teams and, and see where we match up, you know. And again, I've, I could be easily just like, like a lot of these schools, a lot of these schools in the southeast go out and then they, they have a little weaker schedule midweeks. But I don't think it, it, it's doing you a it's, it's doing you a disservice a little bit. You know what I mean? That if, if we're going out there and we're beating a midweek team 20 to 2, you know, I, I'd i rather go against a, a, a stronger opponent and maybe lose by one or two runs. But, you know, I, at least our guys are going through that experience. Builds, builds character, if anything. No doubt. I mean, yeah. You get, I mean, you, you go play with one of the better teams in the country and you come out like, let's see, you may, you may lose by like one, two runs. I mean, you're like, we can, we can hang with these guys. Like, people talk down on us all the time. Like, I mean, we can you just prove it to yourself. You can go out. I mean, you're this no better than the next guy up or the next team up. Like, no, for sure. Any, anybody's game. For sure. And that's one thing with this group that we have is that they don't fear anybody. We, we walk into every game expecting to win. You know, I don't I don't care who we play, the Yankees, the Marlins. It, it doesn't matter that. Well, I mean, on paper, yeah. I mean, we may, we might not be the sexiest team on paper. You know, what I mean, we might not be the biggest, the strongest. You know, what I mean, but. Good thing we don't play this game on paper. You know, we, we, we got to step between the lines and match up and, and see what happens. And I'll take my squad over any squad in the country. I'm telling you, as, as long as we do the things that we need to do and worry about ourselves, I will take my small, unathletic team <laughs> over any team in the country. I'm being serious. <laughs> yeah, no, for, for sure. And it, it's, it's really nice to see, um, you know, a lot of teams and a lot of, like, individuals in general – a laud over the the power hitting baseball you know home run hitting and scoring lots of runs and and stuff like that um but then you know you guys you, you get people on base you know wh whether it be um i think it was what ixarino is top 10 of the country and hit by pitches you mm -hmm. know uh you know you you draw walks you 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 get people on base and then you know, you go to work, it's bunting and stealing and, and base hits and, and stuff like that. So it's it's um, kind of refreshing uh, for I, I, I grew up, you know, playing, watching baseball and stuff like that. I did my um, internship in college with the Akron Rubber Ducks, which is the double A affiliate of the Guardians. Um, so what, being able to watch that and, and, and watch, you know, fundamental baseball that, you, you know, no matter who you are. Uh, you guys are hard to play against. Not a single team wants to play Coker, especially at home. I mean, at eleven and three home record yeah. at Tom J New Field, mm -hmm. it's it's tough to come in here and play Coker baseball. No doubt, we kind of play to our field a little bit. It's a pitcher's park, you know. What I mean? And don't get me wrong, I like the long ball, you know what I mean. <laughs> but but I call it putting pressure, you know, just playing the game, playing offense, and and. Again, when it comes down to it, 18, 22 year olds can't handle pressure too much, you know. So, mm -hmm. so it, 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 our, our style of offense, I enjoy it because you never know what's going to happen, you know. And you got to be on your toes defensively. You better be on your p's and q's and and ready for what we got going on. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, it's a little bit of a faster pace, if you will, for um, what's it called for how you guys play and everything like that. And again, a lot of teams they'll turn around and they'll play about like. You know, they'll play nine innings of baseball and everything like that, trying to outslug each other. But for you guys and everything like that, when people come in and everything like that, it's essentially you pretty much, you know, we're going to play fast paced baseball or for which is ironic to say with small ball and everything like that. So, I mean, I assume changing the uh, 
the culture for you guys and just kind of changing the pace for everybody. I mean, it's almost an advantage for you guys going into it mentally because going into it, you're pretty much saying they don't know what they're going to be expecting. And it, again, it, we've seen it. It throws a lot of teams off. No, I'm with you. And, and, and we base this program on pitching and defense. We got to be able to pitch and play defense. And that's one thing that our pitchers do a really good job with is that they pitch with tempo. You know what I mean? Give me the ball and let's go. You know, give me the ball, let's get a pitch going, let's go. And, and I think your defense plays better when, when you're pitching with tempo. You know what I mean? They're on their toes. They're talking. They're communicating. But, I mean, it, it, it all goes down to the preparation of what we do every day. I mean, you bring up the hit-by-pitches. I mean, we work on getting hit-by-pitches with tennis balls now. I mean, we throw, <laughs> we, we throw tennis balls at it. But we work on that stuff. You talk about base, I think we, we, we're one top two, top three in the country with, with stolen bags this year so far. And we work on it every day, you know, and it – Defense, we work on it. We work, I mean, the little things. I mean, we, we got to pay attention to the little things, the details of the game, because as you guys can see, you guys have been here for, for this year. I mean, we played a lot of close one run games, one yeah. run, two run games where, where every extra free bag we give up is important, or every bag that we take is important, you know? So we preach the little things and being detail oriented and, and, and thinking the plays before they happen. You know what I mean? You got a pre pitch plan, you know, and, and, and that solves a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a lot about uh, the, su the success on the field and how, how you guys have got to that point, but I kind of want to shift a little bit. You talked about preparing your guys for life after baseball, life after college, you know, what, what happens then. So I, I guess, um, you know, with being the this fall the the number one team in division two for community service hours uh so i get I, my, my question would be what's some of the favorite things you guys have, have done as a team um to get out of the community and experience that yeah one of the biggest things we do is um the dylan adams home run derby he was um uh a young boy from hartsville some town of hartsville who passed away from cancer that um they do a home run a home run derby for them every fall. We go out there, our guys throw BP, our guys go shag, pop flies, you know, and it gives them an opportunity to to mingle with the community, to to to, to talk to the, the 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 younger community, you know, that that kind of look up to them, you know, and it's important that, yeah, and, and our athletic department does a great job, you know, I mean, the, the, there's a lot of other programs that do a better job than we do. We need to step our game up a little bit, which I like, you know what I mean? That they're keeping us on our toes and we need to do more with the community, you know, but, but just, just going out there and, and, and bringing the town of Hartsville and Coker together, you know, that that's our biggest goal is, is, is to bring the community and this university together and just be one, you know? And I, I, I've heard a lot of the coaches say how, you know, people that they've met through these community service experiences you know, they see them at games throughout the season. So you're, you're, you're bringing the community in, you're getting them to buy in like, oh, I really like that they did this for us. You know, I'm going to go support them the way that they supported us. A absolutely. Or, 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 or go watch a player that they just met, you know what I mean? And go support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's huge. And and we need to do a better job. I'm not going to lie. I think we need to do a better job. As baseball program needs to do a better job of getting out there with the community. Mm -hmm. And I assume, like, seeing, you know, people, when you go out and you do some of the, uh, what's it called, when you do some of the community service and everything like that, seeing some of those guys come back and everything like that and everything, it's it's something in the back of your mind and everything like that where it's like, this is a town that, you know, they'll come out and support or when we come out and support, and that's got to be something that's, like, big for you guys and everything like that where it's like, Hey, okay. not only do we have the school support, but we got the community support as well. Absolutely. And it's been, and just like you guys said, man, it, it, it's bigger than baseball. You know what I mean? And, and our, our guys went the other day and, and read books, Dr. Seuss books at an elementary school. You know what I mean? And they loved it. You know, it, it's, it's little things like that that go, that go a long way and, and, and teach them life habits. And obviously seeing some of the younger generation obviously come around and like making that impact on some of the again, some of the younger generation is, you know, I mean, for you as a coach, it means a lot. And obviously he just seeing that younger generation kind of just, you know, come in see what the say, Hey, these guys came to my school and everything like that. And just seeing them start to pick up and be like, man, I'd love to go see Coker university baseball. That's gotta be. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also grow the game. I mean, I'm a little biased, but I, I, I think baseball is the, the greatest sport on earth. You know what I mean? And, and, it's kind of dwindling a little bit with that younger age, you know, and, and I, I think it's good just to see them that baseball players in the community that that they can look up to and, 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 and maybe strive to continue to play baseball. 
Uh, well, I, that's all we got for you today. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, best of luck the rest of the season. Yeah, thank you guys, man. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate it.